So we have a viewer from Faustin who wants to know, is there going to be a gas tax increase? And then we have a viewer from Fairchild who wants to know why are gas prices so high? Um, I'm not linking those two, but uh, we do have those two questions. Uh, Senator Simonson, we'll start with you, I guess. Uh, what about gas prices and what about the gas tax increase? You know, it's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> as we started session in January, I started kind of writing down on a notebook in my car the, the gas prices every time I gassed up <laughs> just over the course of the session. And it has, you know, generally trying to go to the same station, right, mm -hmm. just trying to get an accurate number. And that has actually ranged about 60 cents uh, from the high to low. Uh, gas prices fluctuate all the time, and that's oftentimes market-driven. Um, but in terms of the, the gas tax, uh, I think uh, this is a, one of the sticking issues, I think, between the DFL and the GOP. Um, uh, that we're going to have to work out, you know, and whether there can be a compromise or not, I don't know. Uh, I'm hopeful that there can be. Um, the one thing that we probably do agree on is that many of our roads and bridges are in horrible shape, uh, and, and we need to figure out a way to do that. And, and there are different ways to do that, but I'm hopeful that some sort of compromise can be reached and we can, get, we can start getting more work done than we've been doing. Well. Um Gas prices are something that are definitely you don't want the government in control of to start with. Um, one thing to note is that always in the spring when we are changing over from winter to spring blends, that always creates an issue with refineries. Um, it's just seasonal. It happens all the time. Uh, but a lot of it can be driven by activities in the Middle East. It can be policies that are enacted at the federal level. See, that's, again, that government will impact certain things. If you make decisions, it has ripple effects within the market, and the markets will drive up prices, and then the oil prices go up, and then we pay more at the pump. So it, there's a lot of different forces involved in how you get a gas price. But as far as the, the gas tax uh, is concerned, we did actually have that in transportation. Um, we had a pro we did pull out the, the gas tax and have an independent vote on it, and there were there was bipartisan uh, votes against having a twenty cent gas tax. Uh, on the gas tax, I, people need to also understand we have already put in place in the last biennium, we've already put in place a billion point three one point three billion dollars in fresh new money over the next five budgets, above the that would be ten years. Oh, over the next five years. Or next five years, okay. Above the 2018 spend that we have, that is significant. When we, right now, our highway user distribution fund has approximately two and $2.1 billion per year. So we've already put in place because of general fund money that we are using, and we could debate whether that's a wise thing or not. Um, I think it is for a number of different reasons, but we're also using, um, generating money off of the uh, rental car taxes that we already have in place. And uh, we're using that money to increase the spending. But one thing people have to understand is you can't just flood the system with money because we just talked about how gas prices will change. It's a market force issue. If you flood money just on basic economics into a system and you have a fairly finite number of builders that can build bridges, that can build roads, can do the work, you're going to create what's called, I call, government inflation. Because if you've got more and more money, more and more projects, same number of providers, they're suddenly going to be able to pick and choose programs or they can drive up their bids because instead of having seven bidders for a single project, there may be only two and they know it. They all talk to each other. If you only have a couple bidders, you can raise your prices very, very easily and not get as good a bid. And when I was on the city council in Mound, we had that happen. We threw bids out for one year because they all came in 30% higher because all the business, all the businesses who do these things already had enough work, and they said, well, we're just bid high, and we can win it, and we'll do it, but we're going to bid real high. So you have to, there's a gentle balance between how much money you have in the pot and how much you're going to get for that money. And if you cause this inflation because you're just piling money into the system, you can actually get less done with more money. I think, uh, you know, the... <clears throat> we'll agree on energy policy all day long. But mm -hmm. This is where we probably will begin to differ <laughs> more. But, uh, I think if you look at uh, Governor Walls' budget that he's proposed, this is like one of the cornerstones of his budget, is that he wants to raise the, the tax on gasoline by four nickels um, and, and use the general fund money in other areas that he wants to increase. And, and that would take it out of the uh, transportation budget, so? 
and be used for other purposes then, right? That's what he would like to do, is right. use those general fund dollars that Senator Osmick was talking about that are going towards transportation projects now. Instead of doing that, make those investments in, in education and HHS and higher education and those areas that, those are the areas of his budget that he wants to increase spending in. Uh, so this is a really important component of that budget, and without the gas tax increase, you know, that, that's going to have to change a lot. Do you think, Senator Osmick, uh, you know, this is always a sensitive topic about whether or not there's going to be any gas tax increase. Is there any, um, is there any room for compromise around these issues in terms of uh, uh, a small gas tax increase or some change in the use of general fund revenues? Any of those things on the table as far as you're concerned? Well, there's been a lot of different proposals thrown on. Uh, there's a couple of, of uh, possibilities of, of increasing fees on electric vehicles that mm -hmm. aren't paying gas taxes. Uh, I think right now, I think there's a, a lot of things on the In my own personal opinion, no. Mm -hmm. there, I, there's, I believe we have enough money in the system right now. We can always say we want more. Uh, but I have very serious concerns about increasing and in what the economic effect is going to be on Minnesota businesses as well as the people at home for the, having this level of a gas tax increase. So uh, Senator Simonson and I aren't going to agree on this particular one. Um, I just think that uh, we'll find out at the end of session. I will point out that a couple of years ago I had a dime gas tax increase on the Senate floor mm -hmm. and it failed with 10 Democrats voting against it. So. If we didn't vote for a couple of years ago at dime gas tax, I'm not sure, sure how 20 cents is going to fly. But we will see, and like you said, we, we, people are going to have to compromise to get mm -hmm. out of here because uh, there's, it's not a uniform uh, view on what ha what's going to happen in the, in the, at the legislature. As much as I want my view, it's not going to be just mine. <laughs>